you know, ever since you guys shared your interest in UFO sightings, there's this one case, wow, it's been kind of stuck in my head, you know, mm -hmm. just waiting for the right time to really dig in. And I think now's the time. It's got all the good stuff, a major airport, tons of witnesses, even something weird on the radar. Yeah, we're talking about O'Hare back in 2006. Mm -hmm. ah, the O'Hare case, yeah, it's a classic. It really stands out, even when you compare it to, well, you know, a lot of other UAP reports, we got to use the official term now, right? <laughs> Unidentified aerial phenomena. Yeah. And the stuff you sent over, really fascinating. Let's... Uh, Dive into this O'Hare thing. See why people are still talking about it after all these years. Totally. Okay, so for anyone needing a refresher, let's set the scene. Picture it. Chicago O'Hare International. Crazy busy, right? One of the busiest airports in the world. It's November 7th, 2006. A normal afternoon. Passengers are doing their thing. Flights taking off, landing. You know the drill. And then, out of nowhere, a United Airlines employee, a ramp agent, sees something totally out of place. And here's where it gets good. This wasn't someone just glancing up and thinking they saw something. This guy's job, he's directing aircraft right there at gate C-17. Yeah. He's the one who reports this metallic disc-shaped thing just hanging out above the gate. Oh, and it's not small either. Like, they said it was something like 20 feet across. Wait, 20 feet? Okay, that's not your neighbor's drone <laughs> gone rogue or anything. But it gets better. It wasn't just this one employee. Soon, other United staff pilots, mechanics, even passengers, they all start seeing this thing too. Right. And the craziest part is, their stories all line up. It wasn't just quick glances. People saw this object for a good few minutes. Metallic, disc-shaped, totally silent. Just floating there above the gate. And then, boom! shoots straight up, disappears into the clouds, and leaves this perfect hole in the clouds behind it. It's like something out of a movie. Okay, so we've got multiple witnesses, people who work with airplanes every day, and they're all saying the same thing. That's wild. But you said something about radar, too. Don't leave me hanging. Right. Radar data, yeah, it can be a bit messy. Lots of things can cause blips and stuff. But some reports suggest there was this totally weird spike on the radar, same time, same place as the sighting. And this wasn't your average blip, the kind you could blame on weather or a flock of birds. Ugh. Even seasoned air traffic controllers were like, what is that? So not just people saying it, we've got potential tech backing them up. So what next? Did anyone try to explain this away? Oh, I bet. You got to figure, United, the FAA, they're caught in a tough spot, right? Uh, this isn't some blurry picture from someone's backyard barbecue. This is O'Hare. We're talking major international airport. They're responsible for safety, security, the whole deal. And something like this, it could throw everything off. I can only imagine the scramble behind the scenes. On the one hand, you've got all these witnesses, some with serious aviation know-how, saying they saw, well, something crazy. On the other, you've got the risk of mass panic if word gets out, flights getting messed up, the whole nine yards. Did they just try to bury it? At first, kind of seems that way, yeah. Oh. United, the FAA, they both come out and say, nope. Haven't heard anything, nothing unusual here. Smart PR move, maybe? The heat of the moment? But with all those people seeing it, plus the radar thing, you'd think they'd have to investigate, right? You'd think. And eventually they couldn't ignore it. The media, they got a hold of the story and bam, O'Hare UFOs, it's national news. The public wanted answers and the FAA, they had to do something. So they launched an investigation. Finally, someone's taking those witnesses seriously. What did the FAA dig up? Did they figure out what it was? This is the frustrating part. They did the whole shebang, or so it seemed. Interviewed witnesses, looked at radar data, even checked weather, nearby planes, you name it. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Nothing. No concrete answers. Officially, it was inconclusive. So no smoking gun, no explanation. What was the reaction like when the FAA basically said, we got nothing? It was all over the place. Some folks, they were just glad the authorities at least admitted something happened, you know? that they took it seriously. But others, especially the ones who saw it with their own eyes, they were let down. They wanted answers. And the FAA didn't deliver. I bet that just made the speculation even crazier, huh? What were people saying it was? Oh, man. You name it, someone was saying it. Classic disc shape, silent, hovering. A lot of folks jumped right to aliens. Others, they figured it was top secret government stuff, super advanced tech, experimental this or that. Some even tried to make it a weather thing, some never before seen atmospheric anomaly. Sounds like everyone had their own pet theory. But you mentioned this wasn't the only time something like this happened. What about that other case, the one in Texas? That was a few years later, right? You're right, the O'Hare thing, it's a trip. But it wasn't a total one-off. Didn't you mention something about a case in Texas? Something about a whole town seeing stuff? Uh, you're talking about Stephenville. Yeah, 2008. Tons of reports, strange lights, weird objects all around this town in Texas. A lot of the descriptions, they were similar to O'Hare. 
<laughs> big, silent, moving crazy fast. Mm -hmm. Some people even said they saw military jets chasing these things. That's it, Stephenville. And it wasn't just a couple of folks, right? Like the whole town was freaking out. Pretty much. That's what's so interesting about Stephenville. So many reports, regular people, cops, even some military folks stationed nearby. Just like O'Hare, it blew up, became this whole national thing, got everyone talking about what was going on up there. It's like these events, these little peeks behind the curtain, I don't know, they really get to people, you know? That curiosity, trying to figure out the world, it's like you can't help but try to make sense of it, even when, you know, there might not be an easy answer. But when we're talking about something as huge as UAPs, as maybe changing everything we thought we knew, how do we stay curious but not get carried away? Man, that's the million dollar question, right? It's a <laughs> yeah. tough balance. You got to be open minded, right? Consider stuff that might seem crazy, challenge what we think we know, but you got to keep your feet on the ground too. Look at the evidence, be critical, don't just jump on the first explanation that sounds good, no matter how exciting it is. So we've gone deep on O'Hare, right? The witnesses, that radar data, what the officials said, even other cases like it, where does that leave us? I think, well, it leaves us wondering, doesn't it? <laughs> Makes you realize how much is still out there, how much we don't get about our own world, about everything else out there, O'Hare, all these other UAP cases. They're like puzzles we haven't solved. They remind us that the world's a lot weirder than we sometimes think, and that there's still so much to discover, even now, with all our fancy tech and everything. Makes you want to tilt your head back and take a good look up there, doesn't it? Really pay attention, keep asking questions. Who knows, maybe we'll see something amazing. And that's our deep dive into the O'Hare Airport UFO sighting. Huge thanks to you guys, the listeners, for sharing these stories, for being as into this stuff as we are. Until next time, stay curious, and remember, sometimes the best mysteries are the ones that stay unsolved. At least for now.